Hey there, fellow Homo sapiens and everyone watching. Welcome to yet another installment of Intro to Anthropology, where we explore what it means to be human through space and time. I'm your host, Linda, the anthropologist slash librarian, and today we'll be getting dead serious about biological anthropology, my favorite subfield. So I am dying to get started, so let's go. Biological or physical anthropology explores human origins and human variation. It draws from various disciplines like biology, paleontology, human genetics, and anatomy and physiology. Bioarchaeology, the study of human skeletal remains in archaeological and mortuary contexts. Forensic anthropology, a field of forensic science that applies archaeological methods to the investigation of crime scenes. Primatology, the study of primates. Paleoanthropology, the study of our ancestors, or fossil hominids. And behavioral ecology, the study of interactions between individuals and populations, are the main subfields of biological anthropology. Although interest in such topics existed prior, scholarly writing on biological anthropology topics began during the Enlightenment of the 18th century. We cannot talk about biological anthropology without a discussion of race as a characteristic of human variation. From the Enlightenment period through the mid-20th century, the concept of race dominated this field of study. Swedish taxonomist Carl von Linnaeus classified humans as Homo sapiens, a member of the primate category, and specifying four racial varieties of the human species from Africa, America, Asia, and Europe. German physician and anatomist Johann Friedrich Blumenbach expanded this idea and added a fifth racial variety, Malay for the Pacific populations. Blumenbach is considered one of the founders of biological anthropology as well. Princeton University scholar Samuel Stanhope Smith addressed the idea of race by postulating all humans are members of the same species but have continuous variation as the result of environmental modification. In other words, Smith opposed the ideas of fixed-race distinctions that those before him had defined. Nevertheless, American physician Samuel G. Morton, whose collection and analyses of more than 700 skulls only furthered the physical distinctions among the so-called racial variations outlined by Linnaeus and Blumenbach. In the 1990s, evolutionary biologist and paleontologist Stephen J. Gould would criticize Morton's work in his book, The Mismeasure of Man. He argued that Morton had miscalculated cranial capacity due to unconscious bias that some races were inferior to others. Modern biological anthropology supports the claims of Gould, as early biological anthropology and evolutionary studies use science to support racist ideologies. Sadly, in Germany, as well as in many European and American countries, Biological anthropology was riddled with racist rhetoric supporting racial cleansing and anti-Semitism. Most late 19th century biological anthropologists were trained physicians or anatomists and focused mainly on measurements and morphological observations, maintaining that physical differences were fixed due to race, not fluid as the result of environment with the environment not only involving climate and region, but anything that can affect a person externally. With Charles Darwin's 1859 publication On the Origin of Species, the British scientific community split into those who supported Darwinian evolutionists and those who focused on craniology and race, denying the existence of evolution. English biologist and anthropologist Thomas Huxley published Evidence as to Man's Place in Nature in 1863 and is considered to be the first book written on physical anthropology. It not only supported Darwinian principles of evolution, but also included data on comparative anatomy between human and non-human primates, fossil evidence, and explored the topic of non-human natural history. Finally, in the 20th century, a more solid and professional form of biological anthropology arose. In Europe, Léonce Pierre Manouvre contributed to the study by demonstrating that the differences in male and female cranial capacities were due to differences in body size, and also defined the skeletal indices used in contemporary biological anthropology. Over in the United States, Franz Boas, Alice Herdlichka, and Ernest A. Houghton 
distinguished American anthropological ideals. As mentioned in our cultural anthropology episode, Boas is the founder of American anthropology, and he contributed quite a bit to biological anthropology as well. He is the one who defined the four-field approach to anthropology and published numerous works on anthropometrics, the science of human body size and proportion, osteometrics, the study and measurement of skeletal material, racial origins, and human growth and development. In 1918, Alice Herdlichka founded the American Journal of Physical Anthropology, which is still one of the most well-regarded biological anthropology publications today. In addition, he was the organizer and first president of the American Association of Physical Anthropologists, defining physical anthropology as a serious and professional field of science. And finally, Harvard University professor Ernest Houghton's students became the first generation of physical anthropologists in North America, influencing future generations to come. After World War II, perspectives shifted in the biological sciences and the concept of race was once again revisited. An historic moment in anthropology came in June 1950 when the Cold Springs Harbor Institute for Quantitative Biology Symposium was held on Long Island, New York. The subject was The Origin and Evolution of Man and was headed by population geneticist Theodosius Dobzhansky. Evolutionary biology focused instead on population as a unit of evolution and not on the idea of fixed races. This new physical anthropology, developed by American anthropologist Sherwood Washburn, signaled a new era in race theory and evolution. Unfortunately, there still existed an idea of fixed race in most biology-based fields. Nevertheless, in 1949, Thomas Huxley's grandson and former director of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, Julian Huxley, held a committee to study current ideas of race. Ashley Montague, author of the 1941 publication Man's Dangerous Myth, The Fallacy of Race, postulated that race was a social construct, not biological. However, most on the committee opposed this idea. Carlton Kuhn's 1962 book on the origin of races defined five races, Congoid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid, Capoid, and Australoid, asserting that they all evolved from Homo erectus, with some developing into Homo sapiens earlier than others. Still, as we are all aware, race issues continue to exist into the present day. To be clear, modern biological anthropology does not consider race as a valid unit of study. Now let's talk about some of these modern biological anthropologists and their contributions. Probably one of the most well-known biological anthropologists of our time is Dr. William M. Bass. He founded the University of Tennessee Anthropological Research Facility, also known as the Body Farm, which focuses on human decomposition studies and human osteology. Bass has even written many fictional crime novels with journalist John Jefferson under the name Jefferson Bass. A former professor of mine, Dr. Christina Kilgrove, is very active in spreading the word of biological anthropology online, contributing to publications like Forbes, Mental Floss, and Science Uncovered. She is a research scholar at the Ronin Institute and an adjunct assistant professor in anthropology at UNC Chapel Hill. Her research has largely focused on Roman bioarchaeology. And finally, another hero of mine is the late forensic anthropologist Clyde Snow. He is most well known for his work on the remains of John F. Kennedy, the victims of John Wayne Gacy, King Tutankhamun, victims of the Oklahoma City bombing, and Nazi doctor Josef Mengele. His work with human rights groups throughout his life involved the excavation of mass graves in Argentina and Guatemala, uncovering injustice and the mass genocide of innocent civilians. If you'd like to learn more about my favorite field, check out these books and ebooks available through the Gwinnett County Public Library. A Companion to Biological Anthropology, edited by Clark Spencer Larson. Fossil Men, The Quest for the Oldest Skeleton and the Origins of Humankind by Kermit Pattison. Every Bone Tells a Story, Hominin Discoveries, Deductions, and Debates by Jill Rubalcaba. 
Silent Witness, How Forensic Anthropology is Used to Solve the World's Toughest Crimes, by Roxana Ferlini. Beyond the Body Farm, a legendary bone detective explores murders, mysteries, and the revolution in forensic science, by William M. Bass. Superior, The Return of Race Science, by Angela Sini. Bone Rooms, From Scientific Racism to Human Prehistory and Museums, by Samuel J. Redman. Human Evolution by Bernard A. Wood. Seven Skeletons, The Evolution of the World's Most Famous Human Fossils by Lydia Pine. And finally, Their Skeletons Speak, Kennewick Man and the Paleo-American World by Douglas W. Owsley and Sally M. Walker. Thank you for exploring this not-so-dying subfield with me. Next time we get tongue-tied with linguistic anthropology. See you later, hominid.